Welcome back to Knights HQ Podcast, the official podcast of the Newcastle Knights. I'm your host, Jay Nelson. Now, unfortunately, today, I'm without my co-star, the leader of this pack, uh, Matt Croker. Matt's uh, preparing for a, for a big game this week against the Dragons, um, but we have organised to have another Legends chat. And now today's a big one because we're we're catching up with one of our former greats who pulled on the uh, the red and blue jersey. Um, look, let's be honest, probably our most loyal and passionate old boy, I reckon. It's got to be up there. You've got to be at least top three. We're here with Kurt Gidley. Kurt, how are you, mate? Good day. Yeah, thanks for having us, mate. I've definitely watched a few of these and, uh, and yeah, you- I love hearing the story, so <laughs> great to be here. <laughs> One of the leading podcasts in Australia, <laughs> yeah, heard, if not the correct. world. Correct. I was going to say, I'm really happy that you've still agreed to come on after you've watched a couple, which is normally <laughs> the reverse of what normally happens. Um, so, mate, we're going to. Well, how have you been? Yeah. What's, what's going on? Life's yeah, good, mate. Going great. Um, yep, family's well. They're all at school. Year six, year four. Kindergarten, so yep. three girls. Uh, my wife's great. She's a nurse at, at Lingard. Did she just do the trek? She just done the trek. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Unreal. So, uh, a huge effort by. You know, 20, 22 girls or yep. 22 ladies who done Kokoda, tough conditions, really wet, um, muddy, uh, so plenty of slips and falls. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think, you know. What is it, eight days? Eight days, eight yeah. day trek. But um, so it just, again, it gives them a whole new purpose, you know, yeah. um, get trekking, get into Glenrock, um, meeting new people, um, a new purpose in their life, and a good. You know, good physical and mental challenge. So yeah, they done a huge effort. They raised over four hundred and eleven thousand dollars, I think, for Murphy's Foundation. So it was a big effort, and I just know how much growth they get out of yeah. the, those type of treks. Um, they did one to Tasmania last year, and they they upped the ante this year to Kokoda. Yeah. So really proud of all of them. What's the distance on that? It's about ninety eight k's, but it's yeah. uh, it's the elevation up and down, yeah. and it's it's in the middle of the jungle, so it's like that's humid it, humid and and it's slippery, and there's yeah. tree roots, and obviously you know for for twenty two ladies, it's the yeah. a lack of bathrooms and showers <laughs> yeah. and that thing that yeah. so that was that was always going to be a part of the challenge. And my wife's a bit of a, a germ freak, clean freak, so okay, yeah, you know as far as um, drinking clean water and eating food, yeah. it's, um, that was going to be part of the challenge, but. That's why it's, it's such she's a... She's done it. Yeah, she's done it. They've done Unreal. a great job. Unreal. Now, mate, we're going to start today with a, with a game called Guess That Game. Right. So, basically, we've gone through your career and picked a few things. Now, look, some of them are easy. Some of them are a little bit tougher. You know, we don't want to just, you know, hit you with all this stuff that you can't yep. remember or don't know about. Um, so, basically, what we do is I, I give you a couple of prompts. You just buzz in whenever you're ready when you think you know what game it is, okay? Certain buzzer? Yeah, yeah. Check it. Go. Uh, Kurt. 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 Bang. There's your buzzer. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The matches against St. George of the Warra on a Friday night in Newcastle. Ben Kennedy is the captain of the Knights. You play 5-8 alongside James Wynn the halves. My debut. Bang. Yep. Yep, yeah, easy. Winnie and I came from reserve grade, debuted on the same night. Yep. There you go. He's, uh, he's coming on a bike ride, actually, to, to Tamworth. Uh, Knights versus Tigers in Tamworth. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're riding from Newey to Yeah, to is the that game. the thing with... Um, did Drift give you a bike again yeah. this year and, and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I saw that on yep. your social media account. So, yeah, no, nah, it'd be good to see Winnie again. But yeah, certainly remember that night uh, for various reasons. Yeah, yeah, unreal, unreal. Did you, did you um, obviously the the joke we make around here is that everyone that talks about their debut, they are either put into the a game very late or they're named very late, and it's normally with other blokes that are getting named in. So the scores normally not as flattering to your <laughs> yeah, side <laughs> as yeah. usual. Is that pretty close to sort of your recollection of your debut? Yeah, well, uh, so Joey and Sean Rudder were the starting halves at that stage yeah. of, uh, of the Knights' um, career. So yeah, it was good for for Winnie and I to debut on the same night. We we're both playing reserve grade and, and partnering in the halves. So I sort of bounced between fullback and the halves through most grades, but yeah. um, had a good relationship with Winnie, who was a little bit older than me. Um, I was an apprentice butcher at the time, so it was my third year in my apprenticeship at um, at Bobby Lyons' butcher shop at Elmore Vale Shopping Centre. Yeah, um, that was another great you know stage of my life where I learnt a lot of life skills. Yeah, and, for sure, and um, work ethic and reliability. And I still remember my, I had my first ever mobile phone. I think it was like a Nokia th- Nokia thirty two ten or something yep. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it rang, <laughs> and which is pretty rare because not many people <laughs> were calling me or calling my mobile at that stage. So it called at the shop on a Monday morning. And I so you're at work. I'm at work. Yeah, at the butcher shop. Like, yeah, there yep, you go. Because yeah. uh, you know, obviously reserve grade, we were training in the afternoons, and my mobile rang, answered the call, and it was Hags at that stage, and yeah. he said, uh, "Kurt, just giving you a call, mate, to see what you're doing Friday night." Um, I said, "Now probably be um, pretty free, playing reserve grade <laughs> and watching my brother." <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
uh, what, what's happening? He said, mate, uh, put the knives down, take the apron off, and, and I want you to come to train and train with first grade that week. You're going to make your debut. So, Unreal. Yeah, and no, it was a great experience. And that, at that stage, it was, you know, Friday night footy and, and Sunday footy. So yeah, uh, there were two major games of, of the weekend. So to debut at home, Friday night footy, you know, in front of my, my family and friends and, and obviously the home supporters was a, was a huge thrill. And yeah. Um, a, a big week, a great week, a week that I'll, I'll never forget. And then, um, unfortunately, the game didn't go to <laughs> plan, obviously. <laughs> As we, I had, said. <laughs> we had a couple of key players out that night, one yeah. being Andrew Johns, um, <laughs> plus a few others. BK was captain, obviously. Yeah. And um, I, I do remember, and I'll never forget, you know, some of the mistakes I've, I've made over the years, but I did throw an intercept to Jamie Anske on the other team. Um, so That's all part of learning. It's all character yeah, building. Yeah, 100%. But no, a great, great experience and, and a, a night that I'll, I'll never forget, that's yeah. for sure. Or a week that I won't forget, that's for sure. Yeah, unreal. All right, the second one we've got here, mate. Uh, so the first clue, uh, the match is played on a Friday night against the Broncos at Suncorp Stadium. Gordon Tallis is the Broncos captain. Kurt. Got it. Go for it. Do you want to keep going? No, nah, go for it. Uh, first ever golden point, field goal? Yes. Bang. Yes. Do you know what round and what year? Um, maybe, Maybe I know Joey was out. That, we had a few players out again that night. They were heavy favourites as well. Was it 04, 03? 04, 04 correct. 04, round yeah. 10, 2004. Mm. So that was the first golden point victory. First ever golden point, yeah. And, and Suncourt was pretty new, I think, yeah. at that stage. I hadn't been... You know, built uh, for too long. So, but yeah, first ever golden point. So, what was that like as a playing group? Like, it was the first time that's ever happened. Had yeah. they had they played golden point before, or that was literally the first time a game had ever gone into? No, golden I think point? That, I'm pretty sure that was the first ever golden point game in the yeah. NRL. So, yeah, it was a good buzz. Obviously, you know, a, an amazing stadium to play at. It was yeah. pretty new at that stage. The Broncos being a you know a form team at that stage of my career, and and myself, you know, that was my you know, really my. Well, a third full year, I suppose, into, into first grade. So, you know, I, I do. Yeah, Joey was out. I'm pretty sure BK done his hemi maybe during that game. Yeah, and we we still got the golden point, and and I kicked a pretty shonky field goal. Yeah, that um, went over. That, that went over. So, yeah. um, I th- my dad still got the the big league um, in his shed actually, oh, and it's a it's a pretty cool photo that. Um, that um, I, yeah, I'm proud of. But it's yeah. because of the celebration after it that. Um, Number one, I didn't hit it well for a yeah. start. I, I, I stood and watched it. I can picture myself standing and watching it as it's sort of wobbling yeah. over and just scrapes over the crossbar. And then obviously the, the celebration of you know, yeah. you know, celebrating that moment with my teammates and, and I sort of jumped in the air and everyone's tackling me, yeah. holding me up. So it was, a, it was pretty cool. What, what was said in the huddle before that? If it was the first time Golden Point ever be done? Because now like people know what's going to happen. They've kind of got a tactic and how they're going to do it if they lose the toss or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, were you boys just going, oh, well, we're going to give it a crack and see sort of where it lands? or did I, th- I still think most teams were looking for the for the um, field goal op- option. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember who kicked off or who received. Yeah, did we? I, I, I don't know if we won the toss or not. Yeah. But if you I, just say you guys received, obviously it was just like get down, to get down as far as you can and we'll have a crack. Yeah. yeah. I think Bezzy passed me the ball too. Um, so Good service. Yeah, great service. <laughs> and yeah, it went over. I just remember trying to keep my head down and, and <laughs> kick, it, kick it well. I think I was getting some pressure from Gordon Teller, so I thought oh. I'd better get this away. <laughs> Uh, so here's the next one. Uh, first clue: the match is the final game uh, of a State of Origin series at Suncorp. Uh, Graham yeah. Murray's our Blues coach. Uh, Betsy's the captain. Hazamel Masri kicks three from three. Uh, you come off the bench, and the Blues score three tries to Queensland's one to save the series. We'll save a whitewash, sorry, and win so, at Suncorp. So, uh, what um, go through again? Uh, Gray Murray coach Yep, Gray Murray coach at Betsy's Suncorp. a captain Betsy At Suncorp Has a Mel Masri Kicks three from three Yep You come off the bench And the Blues score three tries To Queensland One to save a series Whitewash and win at Suncorp Yeah, well that, would, that was My first uh, Origin series That one Yep um, That would have been uh, 07 Yep, bang 2007 2007 Yep, unreal What was that like? Winning up at Suncorp That doesn't really happen Very often No, I think I, de- I debuted at Suncorp Game one, I'm pretty sure. Yep. I actually done an AC joint, um, so I, I think I missed game. I think I missed game two. Yep. Um, but to be included for game three, back at Suncorp to yeah. to even the series. Um, yeah, it was a it was a great yeah, another great moment. Yeah, yeah. the great atmosphere is obviously all origins, but the build up to those weeks was a whole new experience for myself. Yeah, you know, I, I was a 
Yeah, a very strong blue supporter as a kid and would yeah. stay up, you know, during those origin periods and, and watch those early games, you know, during the eighties with um with my brothers and my, my dad and my mum and to but to be able to experience it in, in person and be part of those ten day camps. It was you know, it was it was almost the pinnacle of the game, I suppose. It's it, it evens itself out when you get to origin or singing the national anthem yeah. for playing Australia. So um but it, yeah, it, a, a good way to, to get off the Origin series, you know. Yeah. But, um, a, a win would have been better, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was um, that was a great memory. Um, playing off the bench in an Origin game, what are the nerves like? Because if you're starting, like you're obviously building yourself up, you run out, they kick the ball, and then off you go. And a lot of players say, you know, once you start getting into the game, your nerves stop because you just you're in it. Yeah. But if you're on the bench, I could imagine that those that rev up and that nerves and those butterflies that you've got sort of elongate until you get out yeah, onto the sure. field. Like, no. How do you handle that? How do you sort of keep a straight head and get ready to go when well, you're called upon? It, and it was a more of a challenge for me because I, I enjoyed playing 80 minutes. I wanted yeah. to play as much time as I could. So as a half or fullback, I, I consistently played 80 minutes. Yeah. The opportunity I got through all my rep teams and it started with City Country was was the the variety, um, versatility that I could play. You yeah. know, I'd, so I'd played through the halves. I'd played fullback. I'd played a bit of hooker. Um, the perfect fourteen. Yeah, Could so plug you so in anywhere. I, yeah. I wouldn't have had the opportunity in 07 to, to debut for New South Wales if I didn't have that versatility. Yeah, um, and I was happy to play wherever I possibly could to, to represent my state. And uh, it was it was you know it, it gave me the opportunity to play in those those type of teams. So, but yeah, certainly sitting on the bench and waiting for your opportunity, and it was all uncertainty, you know, because you don't know when they're going to put you in, you know, and gonna what's going to happen one, in the game, what's and the yeah, game plan yeah. from the coaching staff, and then also if a player gets injured, that's when you know your jacket comes off and, and your your heart rate skyrockets and you you're straight into the game. So, yeah. you know, I did want to play as much time as I could off the bench, but I also understood, you know, with interchanges and. You know, I didn't want to see my teammates be injured, but I was also pretty keen to get on there if someone did. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of eighty minutes, we um I saw uh, Willie Mason and uh, Scope talk about you being the beep test. If yeah, it was that's a myth a or not? Porky, and you, that yeah, one. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so eighty minutes wouldn't have been a problem, but yeah, uh, didn't beat the beat the beep test. No, nah, didn't beat the beep test. I used to give it. a Did fair you comment fair. on that on their social? I did, yeah, I, did. I, I think I, did. I saw I had that. To address it because <laughs> I did see that and uh, and I had to address that that wasn't correct. Um, <laughs> I used to have a decent crack at it, but um, certainly you've never beaten it, that's for sure. I'm not sure how far it goes, but I think I, I found it more challenging to come off the bench um, for some of the rep teams just because, again, that uncertainty, but also, you know, you wanted to get on there and, and make some sort of impact. So yeah. I, I felt more comfortable playing 80 minutes. Obviously, you get into the speed of the game early um, where you're coming off the bench, you, you know, your heart rate. You know, was all you're already burning energy on the sideline, but your heart yeah. rate skyrocketed as soon as you get the tap on the shoulder, or someone was injured and you're beyond. So yeah. I felt like I burnt more energy, you know, in the first five to ten minutes when I came off the bench. So it was a bit more of a challenge. But yeah, again, and did you feel like you know getting a feel for what it's what, how the game's going and and the pace and what's going on? Off the bench, you've got no time to kind yeah. of get that going. You just got to get into it, and you know. Whereas the guys that are starting from kickoff kind of will get a bit of time to really like yeah, get a can, feel for it. You can get a feel for it. You can get you know, the, I guess the momentum and the flow of the game, and you can understand you know how how you're travelling through those early periods of the yeah. game where you didn't get to experience that off the, off the bench. But um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for all those opportunities that I got as a utility. Yeah, you know, in city country to start with. Um, in state of origin, New South Wales, and then and then for Australia because they you know I played a lot of those games where I had an opportunity to, to come off the bench and in a lot of the games I unfortunately for, for my, my teammates but someone would be you know have a concussion or an injury yeah and I was thrown into centre or you know into hooker or or as a half or as a fullback so uh, they were great times yeah mate unreal mate the last one and I think you'll probably get this one uh, this match was played at McDonald Jones Stadium in front of fourteen thousand people. Uh, Cameron Smith is the opposition captain, which kind of guess who the other team is probably. Sure. Um, yeah. A young Dan Gay. Yeah, go. It's the golden point. Yeah. Kick from the field. Yeah, kick, uh, from the kick, the side kick from the sideline. Yeah. Unreal. Uh, which is, what's that? That's 2014. Bang. Do you know what round? 2014. No, it was later in the year because I just remember it was a tough year, you know, like 2014 was. Yeah. Alex's injury, yeah, um, you know, Tinks were starting to struggle at that stage. There was a lot of off-field distractions and yeah. talk around what was happening off the field, what was happening with the club. You know, Nathan's um, 
financial situation. Wayne had announced he was leaving, yeah. you know, a year early, and then um, and Alex's injury as well. So, found it as a, as a captain. It was one of the tougher years that I'd, I'd experienced. Yeah, um, you know, being the captain of the club and so passionate around. Trying to keep Which, everyone together emotionally yeah, and for sure keep in press conferences were tough. Yeah. Um, so I just remember that game vividly around, you know, Melbourne. We had we we had some really great games against Melbourne. A um, couple of couple of memorable wins here at home. Um, even a couple of memorable wins down there. A couple of ordinary losses against Melbourne over the years as well. But I just remember how important that game was to me and to the playing group and to the fans. Yeah. Like the fans were kept. You know, they were so loyal. They kept showing up and supporting us. We had a big crowd that night, and they had a they had a cracking team. Melbourne did, yeah. And we took it to them. We 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 spoke about it during that week um, about the significance of of that game and and trying to finish off the year with some positives. And we we wanted to take it to them. We thought it was an opportunity to to ambush them a little bit, yeah. And and we did. We competed with them for the majority of that game. I think they scored on the on the north eastern side with two and a half or three minutes to go. Yeah. Maybe Will Chambers scored over in that corner to take it to a 10-point lead. And then we went short kickoff. Yeah. We received – we got it back, the short kickoff. We played out that set down to the southern end of the, of the ground. Is that when uh, Travis Waddell steals yes. the ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we didn't score. So, you know, the time's ticking down to, to a minute and a half, I think, at that stage. Yeah. So we didn't score that set. So, you know, there was probably every right – People could leave the leave the Correct. ground and get yeah, get yeah. away the, to their car and get away. But um, Travis Woodell one on one marker. Billy Slater tried to scoop from dummy half. Travi raked it one on one, dived under the post. I grabbed the ball, kicked the goal. So it's down to a minute at yeah. this stage. They kick off, and we we did play some decent shape that night as far as using our forwards to ball play a little bit. Yep, and 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 shifting from side to side. So I remember kick off. We shifted off the kick off. And we'd done about three or four shifts side to side to side. Got to, you know, tackle four and Adam Cuthbertson was sort of 50-50 call. He got tipped over the sideline and it could yep. have went, you know, to them or us. We got the penalty. Yeah. We kicked out and we pretty much went shift, shift, shift. And Aku, uh, Aquila scored in the corner untouched. Yeah. Completely untouched. And obviously the celebration at that stage yeah. was amazing. Crazy, yeah. And I sort of hadn't factored in what the scoreline was. It was more – I was more excited around us scoring yeah. and, and – and Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate <laughs> celebrate in the moment. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh, shit. Now um, I've got a kick to win it. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a kick to win it. No, yeah. You know, as a goal kicker, they're the moments that – you want to be able to experience, and and I had plenty of experiences of those over the years, and and had some success and unsuccessful moments of those. Yeah. But I just again I thought about the week and the year that we'd had, yeah, and the crowd that had stuck around for it, and the way we we'd finished off that game, and, and the significance of the year, and and um, Alex's injury and the rise for Alex year really that we we yeah. sort of had wearing on our jersey. So um, I I wanted to kick the goal, you know, yeah. I wanted to. I wanted to be in that moment. I wanted to do it for our, our my teammates, for Alex, and for our fans that had stayed super loyal to us all that year. Yeah. So as a goal kicker, I mean, I just follow the process of, you know, lining the ball up. I always used to line it up. Um, done plenty of goal kicking with Daryl Halligan, line up in between right upright and, and black dot. Yeah. And and normally I'd have a little bit of hook or or some sometimes when it's on the right hand side, I like to cut under the ball and, and fade it through. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, you know because you. On that right hand side of the field, if you hook it too far, you're cutting down that that that, that, that angle that too. Angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did like to try and sometimes cut under them and and, f- and fade it through. Yeah, slice them through. And yeah, I I just I was aware of the crowd. I was aware of the stillness in the moment. Yeah. And, and but I, as a goal kicker, I used to line the ball up. I'd take three steps back, two to the side, and I'd just look at the the. I'd always keep the sponsored side on the right hand side of the footy. Yeah. And I'd keep an eye on that bottom left hand triangle of the footy of the scene. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's the, that was a sweet that's spot. The, that's the part I wanted to visualize my foot kicking the ball. Yeah, wow. And I wanted to visualize the rotation of the ball. Yeah. Um, over the first three to five meters, and I'd visualize that. Yeah. And I wouldn't look at the post once. Once, once I took my first line the ball. Yeah. yeah once yeah. I take my first three steps backwards, I would look at the post. I'd look at the footy, and the once I'd look back at that little left-hand triangle and take my two steps aside. I wouldn't never 
um, I'd never change my vision to, yeah. to, to that triangle of the footy. Um, I'd always concentrate on the footy and I'd visualise the rotation of the ball over those first three to five metres of going square to the, to the post. Yeah. And my last part of my goal kicking process was just keep your head down. And I do like my golf. I mean, golf's terrible, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many times do you hit a bad shot but you lift your head? Yeah, correct. So it's the goal kicking is very similar where you keep your head down and follow through, keep your head yeah. down, follow through, keep your head down, follow through. And, and I knew when I kicked well, I, I followed that process and I stayed really disciplined around that. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I tried to do with it, that it, kick. It's crazy that you mention all that. Like if you're watching the telecast, you've literally just gone through about, what, five seconds? Yeah. Four or five seconds? Yeah. And in your head, it's just you're going through all of those different things. Like it's almost like time standing still and you're going through yeah. all of those different little things before you, uh, you know, attempt the conversion. And like we all saw what happened. Actually, how was the um, – uh, how did you recover from the stack, stack yeah. on the mill after it? Because oh. that looked <laughs> – it looked like fun but also looked a bit violent. Nah, look, I, I mean – <laughs> the the stack was awesome. But the, the, you know the, the the psychology around sport and footy. I, I love. You know, yeah. I like to dive. You know, deep into it and think about it. But so staying disciplined, I was aware of you know the crowd and the noise yeah. and, and also the stillness and, and the pressure. But um, and to follow that process and stay disciplined and believe in, in that process was good. But the the moment after, you know, is is something that I'll I'll never forget. And yeah. I've, you know, I've got different moments throughout during my career that that I, I, I savour and I reflect on yeah, and some positive and negative, but that was, that was one of the most amazing, fulfilling yeah. ones, that's for sure, because I've seen the, the, the sequence of photos and, and you know, to kick the goal and, and see it go through. And, I mean, my first reaction is, is, yeah. is celebration yeah. um, and then to, to look to my teammates who weren't far away <laughs> yeah. but to be tackled by 16 <laughs> other guys. And yeah. I remember, you know, Mace screaming from the bench, I think he was, and... <laughs> You know, I had six. I've never been happy to have sixteen grown men on top of me. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. So, but I have felt I felt no, you know, weight or yeah, yeah, or yeah. I could have I, I could have stayed there for a week to be honest. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a great moment. Even uh, again, I've seen the photos from the behind view where um, you can just see my head. You yeah, know, and I'm still hugging. Yeah, um, is it gags? I think um, or Aku. I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, just enjoying. Yeah, it, enjoying yeah. The like I, I, I wanted to. I wanted to squeeze all of them as, <laughs> yeah, as hard yeah, as yeah. I could. So that was a that was a um, great moment. One last thing before we take a quick break. So that victory, and obviously like the ninety seven grand final victory, like any sort of famous victory that a Knights team has had, there's that element of just not giving up. You know mm. what I mean? It's a last minute thing. It's one play late in the game that gets us the win. It, is that sort of the DNA you feel? Of our club, that when when we have those big wins or those famous wins, um, it's normally a, a, a sort of a, a never give up, last minute, one play, late game type scenario. For sure, and, I, and my my most recent memory of those moments was was last year, and and uh, I remember a moment where Bradman, you know, tackled on a bloke as he was about to score last year, and Bradman dives, yeah, and, gets and south, knocks the ball yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but that was what we build our confidence or the current team built their confidence on the back of last year, those yeah. last moments of effort where they were saving tries and, and, and putting blokes over the sideline or uh, make, you know, causing an error in, in the last moment. And their, their choices, they're effort-based and they're important because, um, number one, it, it, it saves some points, but also the, the fulfilment and the enthusiasm that it sends – to the rest of your teammates, to the other team, and then to your supporters, um, is just amazing. The yeah. confidence that it gives you, the belief, um, it, they're, they're just they're great moments. So save, saving those type of tries through effort, effort, effort based um, scenarios yeah. are, are important, and they're they're the best moments. Yeah, unreal. Well, look, we're gonna take a quick break now. We'll be back after this on Knights HQ. Welcome back to Knights HQ Podcast, the official podcast of the Newcastle Knights. We're here with Knights legend Kurt Gidley. Mate, thank you for taking us down that trip of memory lane, like especially with going through your process for kicking the ball and all that sort of stuff. Like people have seen that highlight a million times, so yeah. they might not have known what was going through your head as you're about to kick the ball. That, that That's good stuff. Um, so, mate, we've just finished uh, that last segment talking about um, – uh, you know, that gritty sort of, you know, last minute Newcastle mentality for, you know, a couple of our sort of more famous wins. Earlier in the year, uh, we've developed a, a set of values for the club. 
Um, that was through Pari and um, a couple of guys in, a, in, in the HR department. Um, and you were invited to come and present. Uh, we had a little presentation with the whole club. Oh, sorry, uh, all the first grade guys. Um, it was actually a really cool experience. We yeah. actually we had a we had a current player and an old boy um, uh, present what that value meant to them. Um, so you were up with B- Brails, was it? No, I, was, Brails? I was with uh, Frizz. Frizz, you and Frizz, correct. Yep. And um, mate, to talk about a little bit sort of that experience and getting invited and, you know, every time, uh, you know, and I don't want to I don't embarrass you here, but every yeah. time you talk about the club in that sort of scenario, you, you get emotional. Yeah. You see how much it means to you. Yep. Um, yeah, so just go go through a little bit about that day and, and what it meant to, to sort of present the current playing group with sort of how we're going to be doing things going forward. Yeah, so look, it was a great honour, number one. I know it was a, a lengthy process um, that Pari wanted to bring to the club. And, w- and the West Group did. So um, I'm on the board of the Old Boys. Stephen Crow is the president of our Old Boys um, Club and Foundation. Um, so it's it's great to to represent the Old Boys and has still have a connection to, to the club. Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity to come and represent Grit, which yep. I'm really proud of. Um, I think... Well, you, know, you and Frizz personify yeah. that 100%. So they, they couldn't have picked anyone better to present on it. Yeah, look, I, I had some great leaders and mentors and teammates like Betsy... Um, and Joey, Steve Simpson, who represented Grit too, you know, so I didn't have to look too far on what, you know, what I should represent the, the club and the town with. And, yep. and and that resonated with me, that type of work ethic. Yeah. Um, because I, I wasn't blessed with, you know, the, the most natural skills, you know, the speed or strength, you know, so I had to work on a lot of areas where – I wanted to improve in, but I knew effort was one that I could bring to to all the teams that I played in, and and certainly when I learned more about the word grit and read up about it and have watched some some research on it, um, yeah, again I was really proud to to be invited by by Pari and the club to to come and represent grit, and then also to do it with Frizz, and and again I watched this game on the weekend and. Yeah, there's not a better person in the yeah. current team to, to represent that. His his toughness, his effort, his yeah. resilience and his grit is just second to none yeah. and he can just continues to do it at um the age he is and, and the amount of games he's played. So yeah, yeah I, I I proud to you know have those moments where I come in and speak to, to the current team and, and it gets emotional for me and it and it did, you know, when I was a current player, those moments, you know, during video sessions or player milestones or moments where you know, it, I'd dive a little bit deeper about what the topic might be, or yeah. moments during a game, or reflecting on moments um, in a in a, a review session of the game from the previous week. So I'd naturally be overwhelmed by, by yeah, different emotions, sure. and and it would, and I was okay with that because that's that's who I am, and I wanted my teammates to know that I I, I cared about them, and that was that come that come naturally. Yeah, and I suppose that came. Through also a, co- a previous coach in rep teams, Ricky Stewart. Yeah. Um, and I watched Sticky as a as a younger player, um, was a younger fan, and and as a coach, he used to get really emotional during his team talks. Yeah. Certainly, jersey presentations is one that I, I remember, and you know to to see a coach do it, and and then to be a you know a captain and a player, I thought that was that was really cool, and and that that come naturally to me. So, yeah. the grit one was was something that was a real special moment. It was a real intimate moment here at the Centre of Excellence and, and to do it with Frizz and, and represent from an old boy's point of view yeah. grit as a, as a value of the club that, that will live on forever. That was a that was a great moment. Well, yeah, mate. Like for me personally, I'm like seeing someone like yourself who's accomplished so much in the game, talk to the, the current group and see how much it means to you. Like it's a really good window into – um, what it means to be a knight and what it means post your career because a lot of yeah. guys, you know, get a bit lost after their footy career and to see what sort of you're doing and, and coming back and helping and, you know, showing how much the club means to you in your life and your progression, your journey is unreal. Adding yeah. to that, you come back as well to do the all-in training session, which is something that we've added this year. So we had um, – all of the male and female grades uh, all trained together on the same day. Uh, yeah. We got yourself in, we got Robbie O in, we got Bedsy in. Uh, maybe Steve Sinsen was here as well. Yep. A couple of the old boys. Um, what was that like to see everyone together? And look, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, the the kids in the pathway system would have had a kick out of getting uh, some drills and stuff with the first graders and, and the old boys. 
Yeah, well, look, it was another great day and a great initiative by the club to have all players through all grades, boys and girls, involved in one club session. And again, it was a, I'm, I'm proud to be able to um, to be invited back to those and play my part and share my experience and knowledge. And, you know, I get a real kick out of it, a really fulfilling experience for me Yeah, um, to continue to wear the, the Knights colours and, and shirt and, and be involved in those type of days. So, uh, again, reflecting on my pathway, we, ha- we used to have a club session almost every Saturday through pre-season yep. or probably every second Saturday with Jersey flag, reserve grade and first grade. Yep. Those teams would be broken up into small teams of a few first graders, a few reserve grade players and a few Jersey flag, flag players. So they were still great moments that I can reflect on now. I, I was like, you know, shit, I'm, I'm getting a train with reserve graders and first graders. Yeah, like, how gotcha. can I'm, you know, 17, 18 years old and I'm, I'm – I'm another step closer, yeah. you know. So they were that inspired me certainly yeah. at that time. So to be able to come back and and be part of those that club session we we had the club had in the preseason was was awesome. Yeah, and you know again to share some knowledge and experience and be part of the the, the training drills that we did. Yeah, to have all grades um, at our amazing center center of excellence yeah. was was a great day and a great experience and. Um, I think, you know, from the feedback that I've heard, it, it'll be in for, for each year, locked in for each year. Yeah. So no, I think, I think that's correct. Unreal. Now, mate, one last thing before we let you go. I have to ask you this. Yeah. One of the funniest things all time, the footy show prank with Mario. <laughs> how did it come about? How did it go? And how much planning was involved to get that across the line? Oh, well, it, it was a stitch up for both Mario and I. <laughs> so the, the footy show had said, look, we want to do a family you know, um, piece for yeah. the footy show. We're going to go out to your mum and dad's. And I'm, I'm, t- I'm only 19, sort of, at this yeah. stage. I don't sort of debut and was playing, uh, you know, a few more games in 02. Obviously, Matt had been an established player and rep player at that stage. And let's go to your, to your mum and dad's at Wall's End and we'll do a nice family family story. Thinking, okay, well, um, that sounds all right. Yeah. Dad's got plenty, plenty of – mum and dad's got plenty of memorabilia up. And yeah. Anyway, we get there and – they pulled me aside and said, mate, we're, uh, we're going to stitch up Mario here. We've got set up cameras here over in the bushes across the road. We've got Hayes at the stadium ready yep. to go. And I'm thinking, oh, gee, like, I respect Mario. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't. I, I, yeah. You know, he's a past player and he, I, I respect, you know, I want to look up to players who have rep- represented yeah. the game well. And I don't want to disrespect him, but yeah, yeah. they've got all this planned, you know. Yeah, 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 and I'm not, sure. And number one, I'm not an actor, so... <laughs> We do the whole story, which all went well, and then they said instead of backyard footy, all the cameras out the front will do front yard footy. Okay, all right. Well, what have I got to do, mate? Mario's going to kick off. He tackles you. You pretend you get injured. Then we'll we'll, we'll wind him up and we'll stitch him up here. I'm thinking, oh no. <laughs> anyway, it kicks off. I thought I've I've got just got to commit to it. Yeah, yeah. Number yeah. one, and, and whatever unfolds from there, I'll just yeah. try and make it. And I had a hat on, so I pulled my hat down so he couldn't see your reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So I didn't yeah. want to smile or laugh, <laughs> and I just didn't want to look him in the eyes. Yeah. So I go down, pretend I get injured, yeah, of course. Yeah. Ah, oh, my ankle, <laughs> my bad ankle. I didn't even have a bad ankle. And um, he thinks it's a it's a bit of a jump. Oh, yeah. you're right, mate. All yeah. right, gets a look at it. Mum and dad are out the front. Matt's out the front. You see Matt walk off. He's oh, he's trying not to laugh. Yeah, yeah. And then it basically just unfolded that from there to be one of the biggest G ups, you know, oh, on on the footy show. Time. And it keeps getting resurfaced yeah, each year. Man. People text me about it, but oh. I felt bad and and you know, but. It, it, it was a great one. They had Hags teed up, obviously, and Hags is him on the phone with Mario is yeah. Awesome. Maybe we're going to get lawyers involved. And, what are you a doctor, Mario? No, brother, I'm not a doctor. Well, every time I've seen Mario over the years yeah. since, and that was that was probably oh two oh three. Yeah. He'd always come up to me, oh, brother, brother, you got me, brother, you got me. <laughs> yeah. And I'd still give him a hug and apologise for it. It was a good one. That's awesome. All right, mate. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks uh, for having we me. We appreciate your time. Um, you know, it's always good to have you around here, mate. As we said, every time you come in and talk to the current group or you're around, it's always a good time. So we appreciate your time. And, mate, this has been a really good chat. Now, guys, you can follow the Knights social media accounts at NRL Knights on uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram. It's all there. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel now. Full episodes of the podcast are on YouTube. You can leave a review on all podcasts. Podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, it's all there. Thanks again, Gids. Ah, thanks for having me, Jay. And we'll Always see you on the proud. next one. Knights HQ. Cheers.